What lies beyond the furthest reaches of our solar system? Where does our solar system even end? Neptune? Pluto? Some even say that there is a ninth or tenth planet orbiting far beyond the warmth of our sun. It seems that the definition of a planet and our solar system has changed several times already, and now people are looking to change it yet again. What is Planet X, and will we ever actually find it? There are eight planets in our solar system. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Yep, just eight planets, unless you were born in the 20th century. Then you almost certainly learned that there were nine planets with Pluto floating around the furthest edges of the system. While the number of planets in our neighborhood seems like it should be a cut and dry piece of objective scientific fact, it is actually an amazing example of just how important proper definitions are to our collective understanding of the world around us. Before we jump into this fascinating story, if you are interested in early access to videos and live chats with the creator of Intrigued Mind, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Your support will greatly help us keep the channel producing more intriguing content. The number of planets has long been a point of scientific debate, with the definition of what is and is not a planet being constantly reviewed. The very first people to record the planets above us were the Babylonians in what is today Iraq. This is the beginning of modern astronomy, and it's from these people that we have the oldest surviving planetary astronomical text, the Babylonian Venus Tablet of Amasaduka, a 7th century BCE list of the motions of Venus. The Babylonians also created the Molapin, a pair of cuneiform tablets, also from the 7th century BCE, that lay out the motions of the Sun, Moon, and the five planets that they could see, Venus, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, over the course of the year. It's worth noting that the Babylonians, like many peoples, believed that the Earth was at the center of the solar system, and the planets all revolved around us. This belief would be challenged several times over the next thousand years, but it would remain the generally accepted state of things until the 1500s. Move forward a few hundred years to the ancient Greeks, and not a lot has changed. Just like the Babylonians, the Greeks tracked the five visible planets across the sky. In fact, it's from the Greeks that we get the word planet. They referred to them as planetes asteris, wandering stars, to differentiate them from the more fixed stars of the night sky. By the time the Romans came onto the scene, the number of planets had increased to seven. The late Greeks and ancient Romans also considered the moon and sun as planets, but still didn't realize that the Earth itself was no different than the other wanderers of the night sky. It was in the 2nd century CE that the astronomer Ptolemy created his model of the solar system. This model was so complete and robust that it was largely unchanged for more than 1,300 years, though it still had the Earth at the center of the solar system. And for more than a millennium, that was that. There were seven planets orbiting the Earth, and everyone accepted that as fact, until the Renaissance and scientific revolution turned the entire world on its head. The modern version of the solar system that we all know, where the planets revolve around the Sun, actually has its origins in ancient Greece. But it wasn't until the Renaissance that it began to be viewed as the accepted model of things. The credit for this is typically given to Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus in his 1543 text on the revolution of heavenly spheres. About 70 years later, in 1610, Galileo published his text, Starry Messenger, in which he described the observations that he had made with his new, much stronger telescope. These included the four largest moons of Jupiter, we now call these the Galilean moons, and the phases of Venus. He argued that these were concrete proof of a solar system with the Sun at the center. It turns out that this idea made some very powerful people very angry, and in 1616, the Catholic Church declared that the very concept of heliocentrism was heresy. In 1632, Galileo published yet another text defending his observations. The next year, the Roman Inquisition tried Galileo and found him vehemently suspect of heresy. He was sentenced to house arrest where he remained until he died in 1642. At that point, Heliocentric books were banned, and Galileo was ordered to abstain from holding, teaching, or defending heliocentric ideas. Until his death, though, he never officially renounced his position. Thanks to the work of Copernicus, Galileo, and others, the definition of planet slowly changed. It was no longer anything that wandered the sky, but was now anything that orbited the sun. This eliminated the sun and moon as planets, but added the Earth, putting the number of known planets at six. This number would stand unchanged for more than 200 years until 1781, when William Herschel discovered Uranus in his backyard using a homemade telescope. But people were convinced that there had to be more out there. Between 1801 and 1807, four more planets were discovered. Ceres, Pallas, Juno, and Vesta. However, after some further study, it quickly became apparent that these four were rather different from previously known planets. They all shared the same general region of space between Mars and Jupiter, now known as the asteroid belt with sometimes overlapping orbits. When looking at the region, scientists expected to find only one planet, not four, and these were much smaller than all other planets. It was actually theorized that they might be shards of a larger planet that had broken up. 
William Herschel called them asteroids, from the Greek for star-like, because even in the largest telescopes, they resembled stars. For the next few decades, nothing really changed. Then, in the 1840s, several more asteroids were found, and soon, new planets were being discovered every year. As a result, astronomers began counting these asteroids, or minor planets, separately from the major planets, and assigning them numbers instead of names. Although Galileo probably did see Neptune, he thought it was just another fixed star. It was not until 1846 that scientists discovered Neptune based on predictions of its location from its gravitational effect on Uranus. The orbit of Uranus did not match up with where the math said it should be. Its irregular orbit, they thought, could only be explained by a planet even further out pulling on it. This was the first time that an astronomical body was discovered simply by its effects on something else. However, many people felt that Uranus's orbit required yet another planet besides Neptune to fully explain its eccentric movements. Finally, in 1930, astronomers discovered this mythical ninth planet, Pluto. However, doubts quickly arose as Pluto was far smaller than expected. Additionally, the discovery of several other objects in its vicinity in the 1990s quickly gave rise to a call to strip Pluto of its status as a planet. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union officially designated Pluto as a dwarf planet, returning the number of planets in our solar system to eight. But people are still looking. Following Neptune's discovery, there was quite a bit of speculation that another planet might exist beyond its orbit. The search for Planet X began in the mid-19th century and continued into the start of the 20th with Percival Lowell. Lowell was the first to formally propose the Planet X hypothesis to explain the supposed discrepancies in the orbits of giant planets like Uranus and Neptune. He speculated that the gravity of a large, unseen ninth planet could be the cause. The discovery of Pluto was originally heralded as validation of Lowell's theory, and the matter was briefly deemed solved. That is, until people began to actually run the numbers. According to Lowell's calculations, Planet X would need to be roughly seven times larger than Earth to explain its effects on Neptune. In 1931, Pluto's size was estimated to be roughly the same as Earth. But as of 2006, its mass was estimated at only 1 459th that of Earth, far too small to have the estimated impact on the orbit of other planets. This led many to predict yet another planet beyond Pluto. The search, though, was largely abandoned in the early 1990s. A study of measurements made by the Voyager 2 spacecraft found that the irregularities observed in Uranus's orbit were due to an overestimation of the size and mass of Neptune. While the astronomical community is largely in agreement that Planet X, at least as originally envisioned by Lowell, does not exist, the concept of a still unknown planet has been revived by a number of astronomers to explain other anomalies in the outer solar system. Since 1992, astronomers have discovered thousands of objects orbiting beyond Neptune. This region is known as the Kuiper Belt and is made of an uncountable number of small, icy bodies orbiting the outer reaches of our solar system. These bodies are all far too small to explain the irregularities seen in orbits, and the existence of a massive ninth planet in this region of space is highly unlikely. To date, there has been no observed planet in our solar system that matches the criteria for the supposed Planet X, but it also has not been ruled out. The search for further planets in our solar system is an ongoing one, and an increasing number of astronomers have recently come forward with theories of just what qualities such a planet would have. Currently, it is believed any Planet X would need to be 13 to 26 times further away from the Sun than Neptune, and have an orbit of 10,000 to 20,000 years. This means that even if it does exist, the odds of us ever seeing it are heartbreakingly small. In 2016, two researchers from Caltech placed the possibility of a Planet 9 orbiting beyond Neptune at nearly 90% based on computer models. However, they urged skepticism moving forward, stating, Until Planet 9 is caught on camera, it does not count as being real. All we have now is an echo. As the great Carl Sagan said, Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. As of 2022, the search for Planet X is ongoing, and there are currently two teams of astronomers searching the heavens using ground-based telescopes. However, due to the predicted faintness and distance, there is a growing push to use space-based optics in the future. Perhaps it will be discovered one day soon, perhaps one day far in the future, or perhaps never. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.